My name is Emily Merman. I love to read, watch 80s movies, and put outfits together. I'm currently studying writing and art at Lake Forest College, and I'm a 17-year-old senior. Did that throw you off? What kinds of words popped into your head? Genius? Prodigy? Gifted? I'm not doing this talk tonight to tell you about my accomplishments, though, because that may only fuel the misconception you might already have of me. Tonight, I'm going to talk about giftedness and the stigma surrounding it. Because contrary to popular belief, gifted people aren't good at everything. And I faced many struggles up to beginning college at age 15. I was speaking in three word sentences before I could walk. By 18 months, I knew all the letters of the alphabet and their sounds. And by age three, I'd taught myself to read, spending most of my time at the library. I checked out about 60 to 80 books a week, and I remember beating my record with 92 books. This is one of my earliest memories. I was four. One day when I was five, a stranger approached my mom in the library and said, you have a super bright on your hands. I have one too. That day, the gates to the world of giftedness opened. This woman invited my mom to a meeting in a tiny living room in Evanston, where parents of gifted children got together and talked about everything that comes with that. What does come with that? What does a gifted child look like? Is it the kid in all AP classes in high school? Maybe, but it may also be the top child who's deemed the class clown with no future. Giftedness doesn't necessarily mean a privileged straight A student because giftedness doesn't have a face. A child's cognitive ability can be measured with an IQ test, and IQs are fluid, often changing as we age. So one score shouldn't be used as a measure of lifelong ability. Mine has been measured three times. A majority of the population places between 110 and 120. Giftedness begins to be measured at 130. I place around 160, falling into the 99.9th percentile where people score at least three standard deviations above the norm. Now you may be asking, well, why does IQ even need to be measured? Who cares? Well, IQ is used to determine a child's potential. Just as we may measure the IQ of somebody on the lower end of the spectrum to see his or her abilities, we do the same for somebody who's gifted. Like any family member having, <laughs> having a member with special needs, mine was turned upside down. My mom sat in that meeting and cried, finally feeling like she was with people who understood what, what she, she was going through. Nobody there was going to assume she shoved educational material down my throat or that her child was a freak. No one there was going to judge her. Sure that the pace of public school would be too slow, my mom closed her business to devote herself to homeschooling. Are you wondering what that looks like? That is a completely different talk. All I can say is that homeschooling looked like freedom. Our homeschool was even named free and had the homemade slogan, at home to grow our minds. To this day, I still think of my homeschool days as the happiest time of my life. Often self-studying, I had time to delve into certain subjects as deep as I wanted to, and I got to go field trips to museums, Chicago neighborhoods, writing workshops, and nature preserves. HSGS and Evanston Co-op soon became part of our lives. Meetings and get-togethers and classes for gifted children ensued. HSGS gave me an amazing perspective on real-world diversity. There were members of all ages, races, socioeconomic groups, religions, and we were all exposed to topics such as botany, ancient American history, and Shakespeare. I was with a group of children, all falling somewhere on the gifted spectrum, and all willing to learn. However, math still sat as the bane of my existence. I worked through workbooks and flashcards, and I still didn't know any of my math facts. So when I began crying every time we had to do math homework, my mom realized that maybe a public school teacher might deliver the information a little bit better. So at age five, I was sent to part-time elementary school for first grade math. That was a disaster. I was five, reading and comprehending about sixth grade material, but I couldn't add. Teachers told my mom she wasn't doing her job, saying things like, maybe she isn't as smart as you think she is. 
Smart. What does that word even mean? Smart doesn't equal gifted, and gifted certainly doesn't equal good grades. Gifted does equal learning disabilities and asynchronous development. This is called 2E, which stands for twice exceptional. In first grade, I realized I was not like the other kids. I corrected a teacher on a field trip because she thought the okapi was related to the zebra, not the giraffe. She yelled at me for going to the fifth grade side of the library where the higher level books were, saying I couldn't read them, wasn't allowed to, and that my parents would get a call home because I was being disobedient. So as early as five years old, I was already feeling threatened and shamed for being myself. Now this was really traumatizing, but looking back, I can imagine how atypical I seemed. Once on the playground, I was going super slow on the monkey bars and the kids asked why, to which I responded, I'm being a sloth. None of them knew what a sloth was, so they just laughed and said I was making it up. I was with children, but I was alone. That's the reality of giftedness in a neurotypical setting. My mom read books on grade level learning expectations because the original plan was to send me to high school at age 14 like anybody else. These books proved useless. I'd read and retained a lot of the information already. I was like a walking encyclopedia set, minus the math volume, of course. Around this time, my IQ was tested again. I scored in the 99.9th percentile still, but I presented with ADHD, a severe math learning disability, and executive functioning problems. My mom really didn't know where I was at, so I took the ACT Explore test at age eight to see what I could do. I scored in high school levels for science, reading, writing, and history, but fourth grade for math. So was I supposed to be put in the gifted classroom or the special needs classroom? The district said the gifted classroom, but that really wasn't going to suit my creative or academic needs, nor was it going to help me in math. Maybe if I had been put in a special needs classroom, I would have been better at math sooner. Understand that gifted kids are more than standardized test scores, and many can be found in special education classrooms. Although they may not be academically successful, their giftedness may show up in their leadership, creative, psychomotor, or physical abilities. My mom advocated harder at the district. They ended up paying for my online high school classes. So my fourth grade year consisted of online high school, self-study, French tutoring, art, and math at the public school. I was too busy for HSGS now. Teachers challenged me, saying if I were truly gifted, I'd be able to do everything easily. Even after learning that my math issues were related to Gerstmann syndrome, a cognitive impairment that affects my understanding of the rules of calculation, they couldn't believe that gifted people could have learning disabilities. In fact, the higher the IQ, the higher the chance of having one. By the time middle school rolled around, my schedule was frustrating and online school was isolating. I'd run out of options. So at age 12, my parents and I decided to send me to full-time public high school. I'd graduated eighth grade by Illinois standards, but the school didn't want me there because I was 12. My mom faced a lot of bias from the administration and we almost had to involve a lawyer, but after several meetings with superintendents and principals, I finally learned I'd get to go to high school just two days before the year started. So there I was, a bright-eyed 12-year-old freshman, complete with a bob, baby face, and braces. On Halloween, I walked into class dressed up as Joan of Arc, and everybody clapped. They thought I was cute. To this day, my dad still has nightmares about sending me to school that day. <laughs> but sophomore year, I turned 13, and I didn't want to be cute anymore. I didn't understand what a two-year age difference meant. I got used to annoying questions like, have you heard of Doogie Howser, or are you a genius? I'm not funny, but I started to formulate comebacks. Once when a girl asked me if I was a genius, I said, no, I only play one on TV. She thought I was being serious. I'd been put on a pedestal that other people put me on, and I had no way off. I hated it. I hated that everybody in the school knew who I was. I hated walking down the hallway with people turning around just to stare at me. I hated being invited to groups so people could use me for better grades. I was either a source of freakish amusement or an academic asset, and I didn't feel like a whole person anymore. Lonelier than ever, I found refuge in my true passions, literature, reading, 
and art. Even that got bad. One girl in high school bullied me the entire time, often threatening to beat me up. I came into the art room once to find all of my drawings in the trash with somebody's leftover food poured over them for good measure. I knew exactly who it was. Talking to the dean didn't help. Talking to my teachers didn't help. I was 13, getting threatened by an 18-year-old senior who told me to just kill myself already. That one day I'd grow up and be normal like everybody else. But I hadn't felt normal at any point in my life. Giftedness is a way of thinking, a way of being, and I knew that was never going to go away. So what did I do? I fought back through art with poppies. Once on Facebook, I stumbled across a gifted learners page, and they had an article about tall poppy syndrome, which is when somebody who is classified as better than their peers is targeted. Metaphorically, the poppy's big bright head stands out in a field, and they're targeted to be chopped down. I immediately recognized that this was me. I did a quick sketch and I wrote down all of the times in my life I'd felt this way and I cried hard, angry at being so mistreated for so long. But I persisted. I did my whole AP art concentration on poppies and I got a perfect score of five. I became closer with teachers. I met my best friend. I had graduated high school in three years with 31 credits, and I even went to prom in my dress with a big, beautiful F.U. poppy on it. <laughs> I was going to go to college. I was so excited. I thought I'd finally be in a place where mature, open-minded people would accept me for who I am and that I'd finally find my tribe, but I was wrong. The first day of orientation, my age was leaked to about a third of the student body. I didn't want anybody knowing I was 15, but it was listed as a fun fact on the Forester Guide's sheets about the incoming freshmen. A fun fact. Why couldn't it be that I make the best Halloween costumes, or that I had a pet octopus, or that I love Star Wars? It was something as banal, yet as complicated as my age. This made my freshman year a living hell. I spent my time bored in classes and approached by random sexually inappropriate guys. I was in a private college on several scholarships and I was nothing more than, as one boy put it, the genius star of a kitty porno. Part of me wanted to go to parties and dates and talk about who I'd vote for, but the reality was I had a 10.30 curfew and needed my mom to drive me to school every day. Friendless and uninterested, I spiraled into a deep depression. I spent all of my waking hours thinking about how I was going to kill myself because, you see, giftedness means being intense and obsessive. I even had nightmares about people being okay with my death, happy that they could use my brain for scientific research. The stigma and misconceptions I'd been facing for over 10 years had planted themselves deep into my subconscious. But I pulled myself up off of the ground. I started medication and therapy. I'm still learning to love myself the way I did as a kid and that it's okay to just be me. It's really hard for me to recognize that people see me as different because in my mind I'm just Emily. No one's super special except to my parents. Does this sound like another teen sob story to you? I mean, we all have problems. Do I sound like a crybaby? Maybe. Are you feeling sorry for me? Don't. Besides, I'm going to venture to guess that you aren't. But that is what made my journey so intense, and that is why I feel like I have to educate you on the importance of recognition and inclusion of gifted people. I'll always be the girl that blurts out useless information at parties, rambles on about things only I find interesting, or gets excited about a date to the library, but that's just who I am. If you're wondering if a normal educational path would have been better for me, I can tell you right now that it would have crushed my soul. In a few weeks, I'm going to turn 18, and I'm really enjoying blending in more. Plus, I finally mastered the art of using a calculator. <laughs> have I had some great opportunities? Yes. My art's been displayed in Union Station, I've been published twice, and I've won a bunch of awards. So my life has consisted of good and bad experiences, just like all of yours. My hope for you tonight isn't to feel bad for me or be impressed by me. That isn't why I came here or chose to be vulnerable. 
I want you to take away the idea that giftedness is something people don't get to choose, but with respect, accommodations, grit, persistence, they can really offer the world their talents. My name is Emily Merman. I have an 11 o'clock curfew now. <laughs> I'm a horrible driver. I'm graduating with a double major. I'm in 1% of the population and I don't fit in. I like to blast my music. I have celebrity crushes. I roller skate every Friday night. And I'm a tall poppy still looking for my tribe. One day you might see another one growing and their head's gonna be hanging really low. Smile at them. And should you see one growing, think twice before pulling out your scissors. Thank you.